Ladies and gentlemen, it's player profile time. This time we're going for a man who is currently playing. Right this minute? Yeah, mm. and, and you could argue that In he's, the studio. Uh, well, yeah. He's, uh, he's in his peak years. It's, it's one Roman Riquelme. Hey, hey, awesome. Hey. Awesome. Welcome in. Yeah, Romy. Well, not Romy. yet, not yet. I've got to do the spiel, and then okay. he comes in. Born uh, 24th June 1978. Once again, he's won the sperm race. <laughs> he's another person yeah. in the Dean Windows Hall of Fame that's just a natural winner. Uh, obviously an Argentinian uh, midfielder, uh, currently playing for Boca Juniors in the Argentine division. He can be described as a, he's a classic number 10 playmaker, old-fashioned number 10 playmaker, with a very elegant and, and unhurried style. He's awesome, basically. He is. <laughs> his, position, his position is awesome. Well, let's, just, let's get straight He's the classic it. awesome, I'd go as far as <laughs> yeah. <to> say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's the classic oh classic Can you imagine that when he's chatting up a bird in the bar? What position do you play? Oh, uh, traditional awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He had very harsh upbringing. Um, at the age of 10, he used to turn up for his um, uh, youth side, Argentinos Junior. Juniors. Maradona's um, youth side. His dad was a gangster, wasn't he? His was, dad was a gangster, and his dad would um, would make him play in uh, in uh, matches in the shanty towns, which were the basis for illegal gambling rings. <laughs> but onto the football, he his youth clubs, as I said, were Argent Argentinos Juniors, and then he signed for Boca Juniors when he was uh, very young, 1995, as a youth player, and turned professional um, in 96. He had uh, seven successful seasons with Boca Juniors, did really well there, and this caught the eye of Barcelona. Um, he had 150 appearances for Boca June is 38 goals. I mean, that's uh, exactly the same uh, um, career path as Diego Maradona, isn't yeah. it? Up to Barca, he, lo he loved he loved Boca as well. He did love him. Well, he did. I don't love think he wanted to leave. I don't think the fans wanted him to leave. Well, either. that's right. Well, there, there was uh, often is in South America in a controversy around the um, around the transfer. I mean, it was, this was shortly after um, his brother Christian was kidnapped, and, and Ra Raquel actually negotiated and uh, paid for paid the ransom for his brother's release. And he said this was one of the reasons why he, ch he chose to leave Boca. But it was it was suggested more perhaps, than that, wasn't it? it was, well, there was yeah. a bit more than that and actually they think that he never really wanted to leave because he I mean he loves the club this is genuine love for a club and uh, he wanted a new contract and they weren't offering him one were they, they wanted well, the money they, they, apparently they made a little bit of a plea because they needed the money but anyway he went to Barcelona and the coach at the time was Louis van Gaal and he described Raquel as a political signing I think he was van Gaal was trying to recreate a classic Dutch team I think yeah. him out on the wing who yeah, was, was there at the time does anyone remember um, well he had uh, he had Overmars and Zenden yeah, which were wingers yeah. and I think that was a real focal point he had um he would have had Cliver. He tried to sign the whole Dutch natural side. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Yeah, very Dutch, had, yeah, very Dutch. And then when he left, they signed Ronaldinho. Mm. So he had no chance. Basically. Well, yeah. yeah, when he left, they did sign Ronaldinho. Um, he was he was loaned out to to Villarreal. This is where it really sort of began to happen for him in Europe. He, was, he must be the biggest player to ever play for Villarreal. Yeah, well, he, I mean, he mm. was he was a big part of the de development of that club, and we talked about that club earlier. So you know, from from not very much uh, from humble beginnings, not that far, uh, not that long ago, they've really shot up and they're now in Champions League for crying out loud yeah, you know, yeah. and he was a big part of all that kind of stuff um, he, was he was surrounded by um, other South American players there which I think helped and he had the oh, Argentine was Sorin, Sor Sorin yeah. was there yeah. yeah absolutely he was a good player he was an excellent player and, awful uh, haircut terrible yeah. but let him off mullet <laughs> Um, no, it was a mullet. classic mullet. No, 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 no. He was, he was much more. Oh, I'm thinking of Ortega. Serene had like a long, long hair. Yeah, long quite, quite thick. Number, yeah. Yeah. At the end of the 2004-2005 uh, season, the Spanish sports newspaper Market awarded him the title of uh, artistic player, which is, cool. which is like you'd be having that. You can just have like that's Gibraltar best. Cisse as Lord of the Manor of Frodsham, <laughs> <laughs> the artistic player Juan Roman Riquelme. After why not? And Peter Crouch is not? Lord of the Robot. <laughs> <laughs> and they finished third um, in the Primera Division in that uh, season. And uh, he got a nomination for World Player of the Year. Um, obviously, didn't win it, but he got a nomination. I've never had a nomination. No. <laughs> um, Some would argue, like, unjustly. Un yeah, unjustly. Uh, uh, absolutely. Um, it's all politics, Mark, isn't it? When yeah. you get to our level, <laughs> <laughs> certainly. He had he had 106 appearances for Villarreal, scored 36 goals. I mean, that's a great return. He he, he he basically. I mean, no disrespect to the other players. From what I saw, mm. he basically was that team. Yeah, yeah. he turned yeah. that team around. Absolutely. Well, it was the semi final of the Champions League. We missed a penalty, yeah. and, which would have taken them to yeah. one all. Layman saved it. Yeah. 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 They could have won. The, I mean, I know it's probably a bit of a jump to say they could have won the Champions League, but. If they, imagine, they're in the semi-final. Yeah, imagine yeah. if they had won the Champions League. Yeah. This is the thing about Raquel. That's why I think, I mean, we're all day saying whether he's as good as him, but 
you can compare him Maradona to that way because he just takes teams on. Yeah. yeah. And, he, and he, but, he is the team. But the thing is, he does it much more subtly than someone like mm. Maradona. You know, the, the defence splitting passes, just the, the, making the game slow down yeah. and all that mm. kind of stuff. He oh, yeah. basically, he, he just does what he wants. And because he is a very slow player, people yeah. often criticise him for this, but he is a very slow player, likes to just amble around. His own bit, pace, yeah. Exactly. Um, he splits opinion in, in Argentina, as far as I know, because there's a load of p- p- fans who love him because it, they remind he reminds them of the old old sort of style of football where yeah. they used to all sit around in the community and watch the game together and stuff. And, yeah. and he's a real old fashioned sort of player. But I think there's yeah. a lot of fans who who get a little bit frustrated with the slowness of his play, especially international level. Yeah, also, he's a very yeah. he's actually quite a sort of. Uh, emotional guy, isn't he? Oh, you absolutely. can't take yeah. criticism at all. It's so very much so. The national well, he, he's, famous for that, he's famous for mm. that quote saying, um, when the team loses, it is, it is always Raquel May's fault. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah that's right. Well, it, yeah, you're right, James. Very introverted character, and he, and he needs to be reassured a lot, and everything needs to be on his own terms, you know. Because, I mean, because he is the absolute heartbeat at that side. And, and Villarreal knew this, and, and obviously they, they had a lot of South American players there, which kind of made him feel at home a bit more. But they would let him, I mean, he brought a plane load of friends over from, you know, the, where he was from. From in, in, in Buenos Aires, you know, and the, and the club would be fine with that. He would just <clears> do what he wants. Um, they never questioned his injuries. They'd turn a blind eye if he didn't fancy training. You know, they built a team around him, as you say. He's like a classic, like, fucking French existentialist character, man. Like a real outsider. <laughs> yeah, he, is, no, yeah. he could be in an Albert Camus book or something. Yeah. No, no one, uh, well, in, in, no 2000, one in 2007, they um, allowed him to travel back to Argentina for the birth of his son, and, and he, he returned. He didn't even say thanks, apparently. <laughs> um, and when he returned, he had a little bit of extended stay, which he shouldn't have done. And he just he just didn't fancy training when he came back, and, and Pellegrini, who was in charge at the time, just that was the final straw, yeah. you know. Yeah. Which is such a shame because you know, well, it's, it's good that I mean he's now back at Boca, but it's good to see him at the club he loves. But I'd you say back see... at Boca again, I like yeah. it. Back at Boca, back at Boca, back I, I Boca. think <laughs> I think the amount of quality he's got affords him a little bit more leeway, a little bit yeah. more rope to. Be, have, a bit, have a bit more freedom, especially at a club like Villarreal, which, with all due respect, is one of the smaller clubs in, in the top league in Spain. Yeah, yeah sure. I mean, uh, but uh, unfortunately, he just took the piss, really, you know. In February 2007, he um, went back on loan to Boca and uh, he played a huge part in Boca's success in the Copa Libertadores in 2007. And they, uh, they, Boca weren't a good side. No, they were a poor side. Again, he's just gone in there and just, uh, just well, they, done his stuff. They had Palermo, who's a bit of a legend around those parts, one of two other players, yeah. and Raquel just came in and lifted him. Yeah, completely, yeah. yeah. And it is so difficult to win um, the Copa Libertadores, you know. I've, do, you know do, do you not think watching him play, I'm not sure if you boys agree, I might be a... Uh, sort of step too far. He's got a bit of a Zidane about him. Yeah, absolutely. The, the way he controls say, yeah. the ball and the way he the controls the game. Yeah. yeah, he does. And the ball's always on like a string. Yeah. And he's not obviously skillful and tricky. He's big and strong, but he's he's also got a lot of lot of touch Completely, as well. Completely, yeah. Know? Completely. And uh, it's also to, important to point out um, that he took a big pay cut to go back to Boca. I don't think he ever wants to play for anyone else. No, he, yeah. he just he loves that side, absolutely loves it. And and move on to his international career. He won the South American Youth Championship in the FIFA Under-20 World Cup in 97 with uh, Jose Peckerman, and, uh, but didn't play in the 98 or 2002 World Cups. Peckerman in, in 2006 was in charge of um, the Argentine side and he built the whole team around him. And this was, was more so evident in the quarter-final against Germany when they were 1-0 up and, and looking pretty comfortable, and he and he took him off. He didn't have his best game, to be honest. He got, he got, he got dragged in there, I remember. But yeah, but he did, he took Raquel off the pitch, and everyone thought, "What's he doing that for?" Yeah. And 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 they went out, they lost they, their shape. They, they completely, yeah, well, yeah. That was, yeah, that was a crazy move. Considering um, he had Messi on the bench as well, didn't he? But he went for a really sort of like, let's try and shut out Germany in their own it's backyard. Stupid, Mental. man. It's stupid. Yeah. Isn't it? Learn from history. Exactly. It's never going to happen. I, I, I think. I think. You know, Raquel May is. I mean, you're probably going to come on to this, but his, his retirement from the national get team is absolutely un- unbelievable. Well, we, 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 yeah, we'll mention that in a bit. He retired. Uh, the first time he retired from the, the international side was after the 2006 uh, World Cup, um, saying that the press and, and, and public had negatively affected his mother's health. But again, people say it's perhaps because of the criticism. You know, they didn't win and they, yeah. they blamed I don't, him. I, and... Yeah, he, he is a complicated character. I, think, mm. I, I don't think he likes... And I, I would never sort of criticise him because I don't know him and I've never met him and he's a wonderful player, but he does seem like a precious character. Someone yeah. who, He's got a bit of a chip on his shoulder, you know. And sometimes the best players and the most talented people are a bit like that. <coughs> yeah. I think he's yeah. probably used that as a little bit of an excuse. A bit like yourself. It's like the, yeah, well, it's, yeah. it's the artistic temperament, isn't it? Which yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, sport as well. I think mm. so. Yeah, totally. Yeah, 2007 Copa America again. He was really making that Argentinian team tick, and they were playing fantastic football. And it was it was a shock that they got hammered in the final by Brazil. But again, he, just the way he orchestrated the team was yeah. just it's absolutely unbelievable. He also captains the Olympics, didn't he? 
That's, well, that's right. right. Yeah. He's one of their he won it, age players. Yeah. yeah, he won the gold medal. He captained them to the Olympic gold medal in um, in China. 2010 World Cup qualification campaign. You know, again, he was. I mean, he scored two free kicks against Chile to get them off the winning start. He, you know, his last game against Uruguay in October, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, he was scoring goals. He was doing well. But then, unfortunately, uh, last month in, in March, um, he quit. You know, he's, he's apparently him and Maradona. He just says uh, that they could not work together and they did not share the same code of ethics. I, th- um, I think also he doesn't really get on that well with uh, Mascherano and Gago and a couple of the other players. Well, well, Maradona came out and and said that his heart, the heartbeat of his team was Mascherano, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. And he, Mascherano's he, his captain, isn't he, as well? Yeah, very much so. Very and unusual for a player like Maradona to pick a player like Mascherano. To well, that's yeah, right, yeah. That well. I'm not sure if the player... I don't sure if Maradona the player is the same as Maradona the manager. I'm not yeah, sure it always yeah, works like fair. that. But, um, Although uh, he is crazy. And you yeah, oh, he absolutely crazy. Pick yeah. himself. He probably just picked his name out of a fucking hat. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, well, it pick... sounds most like Maradona. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you will be my captain. <laughs> <laughs> um, now we must get you a wig. Eat, my precious. Yeah, yeah. May I? <laughs> um, uh, giving such importance to Mascherano probably put Raquel May's nose out a bit because Jorge Valdano, one of the previous international uh, Argentine players, said that Raquel May always needs to be one of the main players and it's impossible yeah. to have him in the team without giving him all the responsibility. Yeah. Mm. You know, and Maradona said, well, if, if he comes back and says sorry, then he'd be happy to have him in his side, you know. But he says this is... Uh, Maradona said, all I said to him is I wanted him to play 15 metres further up the pitch and what have I done to scare him off? If I can't say how I want my players to play, then I'm in the oven. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I assume that's some, some sort of saying he's got <laughs> that we're yet to hear about. I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure there's probably more to it than that, really. But yeah. I think the thing is with him is he's, it's a bit like he'll say something like, oh, when, when, when the team loses, Raquel May loses. Yeah. Raquel May's fault. Yeah. But at the same time, he sort of almost seems like he, he needs to be the main part. He needs yeah. to be the prom queen. Well, he needs to have everyone it. around him. Yeah. And so if he wants it that way, he has to really have it that way. Yeah. You know? And it is a shame because I'll tell you what, that, that hammering they got dished out last night, if they could have kept the ball a little bit better, like with someone like Raquel May, they probably yeah, would have done a little bit better. So. Yeah, completely. Well, in, in altitude, I mean, Slow the game down. Yeah, definitely. It's as simple as that, really. Raquel May was given a rapturous reception on his first game back um, for Boca since quitting the, the Argentine side. And it's really divided people. Um, and uh, the, the, the fans were chanting his name and with big banners. and Chanting they, with banners? <laughs> they do it all, Joe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they were chanting his name and had banners with his name I think on it. I think I'd be scared to go and watch a game in the bomb in there, especially the top tier. Have you seen how sheer it is? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You've been there. Done it. I'm nice. Is it really, uh, really steep in the top tier? It looks ridiculous. Yeah. Well, I'm hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, no, it was it was quite something. Yeah, I bet. I got spat on a few times. Some bloke tried that to piss on where us. you go, didn't it? So, yeah. Some, <laughs> some bloke tried to... They put, they, it was Boca v. Kilmers. In, in, incidentally, it was the game when, when Gary Lineker went to interview Maradona. Uh, not just interview him, spent a few days with him. Yeah. It was the game that they were at, actually. I was there, and it was Boca v. Kilmers. And they stupidly put the away fans above us, yeah. <laughs> and there was, and honestly, all sorts of blooming I mean, spit and horrible things was smacking you, and uh, rocks were getting chucked down and everything, and uh, no security in the stadium. And, uh, some bloke tried to piss on everybody. It was, <laughs> oh. <laughs> to be fair, I mean, he must have. It wasn't Raquel, there was it? No, 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 no. He, well, he wasn't playing there at the yeah. time. <laughs> um, he pissed for about a good two, three minutes. He did well. He stored that up all day. I Let's think. not sully this profile. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> he'd been drinking all day with spurious <laughs> talk of Europe. In. Do Come you on. really think a football fan would do that, James? <laughs> would they be that silly? Yeah. Pete's certainly that silly. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, John Terry, he pisses very <laughs> <right. laughs> Anyway, back, back to the profile. I'm not out talking John Terry in this profile, thank you very much, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> um, but some fans have turned against Maradona with, with, with banners calling him a traitor um, for comments he made about Raquel. So again, it's really divided. Mm. Mm. Seems that like you the, have to the, be the on one side or the other in yeah. this sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I will end with, with a quote as I tend to do um, from the from the great man himself. He said, I'd, I'd die to wear the shirt of the national team, but it's going to hurt me to watch the World Cup on television. No. I'll tell you what, I hope that, that, he, that his, his mind has I'm changed. I'm sure this will be sorted out. As the World Cup draws nearer, I doubt I'll be able to resist it. I'm sure they'll mm. resolve it. It's so disappointing like, when so. something like that happens. Yeah, yeah, no, imagine, no, imagine when you're 18, you sort of go, what was the point? Yeah, exactly. You know? yeah. I mean, yeah. really. Well, we had it last week with, with Brian Cuff and Peter Taylor. Yeah. 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 And it ended terribly, and it's, it's never a good way to go about things. But this is... Yeah. He could be, he's a player that could be the difference between him winning the World Cup or not. He really yeah. is. You but know? This, this is the reason why I really wanted him in, because I think Maradona will sit up and take note and think... So. He's in. He's in that Dean Windows Hall yeah. of Fame. I'm not even in there. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so stick that in your 
Cuban and smoke yeah, it. It's, eh? not, it's not like when Jamie Carragher retired from England <laughs> and no one really cared. Because I'm bringing him in now. Rick, yeah. I'll make you into the Demon Dash Hall of Fame. Hey, come on, listen Give to it this, up. Diego. Give it up. <laughs> Romy. Vamos, vamos. <laughs> Don't let the tortoise get away. Yeah, vamos. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is the end.